This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. If a few years ago the debate was over whether we ought to use technology in education, today we've moved far beyond. The focus is now on how to best use technology to benefit the maximum number of students, how to leverage it to our advantage. Technology, after all, dominating every other aspect of our lives. How can we expect education not to try and keep up? That's, of course, the big question. A special panel now joining me today, Colonel Gopal Karunakaran, CEO of Shiv Nadar School with us. Uh, Mr. Shantanu Prakash, Chairman and Managing Director of uh, EduComp, also here. Uh, Sanjay Parohit, Founder, CEO, IPROF India. And Ratnesh Kumar Jha, Managing Director, Cambridge University, South, Cambridge University Press, South Asia. Thanks all so much uh, for being with us. <laughs> Colonel Karunakaran, in fact, I could start by asking you, there are so many parents who've always sort of been a bit reluctant or a bit apprehensive, if not reluctant, about just how much is too much when we talk about technology. Who do you think is the best person to decide how much is too much in the classroom when we talk about technology? I think the single answer to that is uh, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure. candid. I, I don't think uh, when we started the school three years ago, this is one of the foremost questions we asked ourselves. How much technology, which age do we start with technology inside the classroom? What is the ideal type of content? Mm. Um, how do we enable the teachers to be able to use it? Mm. Because they are not mm. digitally native mm. as much as the generation, which right. is the post the millennium ge generation. So I think uh, in some ways, uh, I would say that we are not too sure. Mm. So it's the, the education fraternity, the parent community, the students themselves who right. need to sort of figure it the out. The stakeholders then which sort of need get to together. Figure it out. But right. for example, we took a very conscious decision that in nursery and KG there will be no technology. Mm. So, you know, that's sort of a starting point. We said there's just too much happening in their lives. Mm. It's too passive a medium. They must, as I was talking to uh, Shantanu, they must learn to use things with their hands and right. be creative and right. spend time reflection. Right. Well, we'll yeah. go look at that because we've had many parents writing into us saying, you know, who decides I can't get my child off this deck and mm -hmm. how much is too much and iPads in the classroom. So we'll look at those kind of concerns a little later. But coming back, uh, you know, to our focus on, I mean, th there's no getting away from it, uh, is I shan't know. It is a reality. The world is ac accepting it. We have to stand up and sort of grab the opportunity. What do you believe has been our one big success about adapting technology in the classroom and what uh, quickly would be the one big failure? Well, I would say, Natasha, that if you look at a typical Indian classroom, mm. I would even go so far to say that it's dysfunctional. Mm. You have 40 to 50 kids on an average in one right. classroom, right. crammed into a small space, about 400 right. square feet or so. Mm. Teachers in India mm. are probably, if you look at a professional spectrum, mm. are way down on how much we pay them. We right. should be paying right. them more. Right. So we're not able to attract the best teachers, the best and human capital huge uh, to, the, uh, right. to the profession. Mm. And the curriculum just keeps, keeps getting loaded on every year. Mm. And on top of it, if you layer the fact mm. that parents have this insane motivation mm. for their kids to keep doing better and better, it's you have all the settings now. of a dysfunctional classroom. Mm. So when, when EDUCOM started, we said we need to figure out mm. how can we make these teachers mm. productive in the classroom. Mm. A technology was an answer. Mm. Okay, we started 10 years back. In mm. fact, we are celebrating 10 years of digital classroom in India uh, this year. Yeah. And now there are about 300,000 mm. uh, classrooms across the country mm. that use technology every day. Mm. So take a typical class, for example. You're teaching photosynthesis mm. or you're teaching some abstract concept mm. in math. Mm. Without technology, you have to revert to chalk and talk. Mm. And Gopal mentioned about these kids being digital natives. Mm. So, you know, I call them three screen kids. Mm. So mm -hmm. they are, they look at the TV screen. Mm. Okay, probably they watch NDTV. <laughs> okay. We hope They're, so. <laughs> <laughs> talk they, about starting young. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they have their cell phone screens. Right. Okay, and right. they, then they have their tablet. Mm. So these kids respond mm. differently mm. to audio visual exactly. than right. kids of my generation right. or the generation right. previous to that. Right. Yeah. 
That's of course one aspect of that. That's very hard thing to know. But Mr. Parohit, there are of course lots of others who sort of say, you know, look at uh, students enrolling for online courses. How many are actually finishing them? How many are wrapping up? What's the sort of concrete result? What are we looking at? How would you sort of uh, respond to that? Okay, yeah. we focus mainly on supplemental education, mm. which is behind b beyond the classroom. Right, right. And that's where we get complete data about how much people are using. Mm. I'll give you a data. We have about 30 lakh students which used iProf last year. Mm. And average uses is seven minutes per day, supplemental okay. education. Right. So it's about right. one hour a week. Hmm. A pers average student studies five hours a week hmm. for supplemental education. So 20% of time they are already spending on iProf Study Buddy app. Hmm. Hmm. So what we see is a significant move towards hmm. the uh, screen-based learning rather hmm. than a teacher-based learning. Right. Now, when you mention shortage in the classroom, hmm. there's an acute shortage for self-study. Right. There's no right. teachers available in the evening. Right. And we all know that classroom education is not sufficient. Stud right. Student has to come home. In fact, that was going to be my next point, really. That that, that really is, is proof that you need to supplement what's happening in the classroom and the need to look beyond just just sticking to the classroom and the you know sort of interaction there that's right is and not good enough and that's right and that's where the biggest boon has happened for india is the smartphones mm. because now the smartphones in our target group under 25 mm. is about 30 percent people have it mm. and it's another 120 million smartphones are coming mm. so we are a mobile learning superstore mm. so you have right. all the courses so that's mm. where people download and mm. use it on their smartphones mm. and i think that's also where a lot of the aspirational young indians are, are now there those that's you know right. tier two tier three towns that are sort of trying to also raise the bar for themselves but you know you, you mentioned tier two tier three i was going, going to get that in a little later but i i will now Mr. Uh, with you perhaps which is you know we've also sort of looked at of course uh, uh, mr parohit they're talking about tier two tier three and, and sm small town india also wanting to be part of this learning but what about the many 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 small towns and villages where you know with our internet penetration still under the scanner we're talking about digital india and all of that but of course we still have a long, long way to go. How do we sort of get everyone on board? So I see it from a two perspective. One is technology as an enabler. Mm. Be the engagement of student or the teacher mm. or the whole classroom going up. So the mm. whole classroom productivity or engagement going up. I would see that if there is an aspirational mm. ge gesture which has been put forward by mm. the government mm. and say that, okay, for, by 2025, it'll mm. be a digital pervasive and everywhere an internet is going to happen. Mm. The challenge which it throws to us that mm. how do we, as a provider of education, mm. really start thinking in terms of engagement going up, right. high quality content, uh, exactly. teaching cap right. cap capab capability going up. Right. So all of that becomes the challenge for right. us. So if you put the assumption that all of other things really works well, which right. is internet penetration, et cetera, right. et cetera, will not happen. Mm. Then we start solving the problem. Right. Now, those are very aspirational, and those exactly. are challenges which we have at this point in time. And, and we are sure all of us are working collectively to right. solve that problem. But the, the, the main theme still remains, what's the content, who's the teacher, how are you enabling them, how are exactly. you increasing the whole uh, quality there? Exactly. Shantanu, how much of this do you find absolutely frustrating, honestly? <laughs> When you look well, at the challenge. Yeah, <laughs> the internet infrastructure in hmm. India hmm. has been frustrating for a while. Hmm. I mean, I have 3G on my phone. Most hmm. of the time it works like 2G. Exactly. Okay. And this is something that you go to a small town. I mean, we can't even get voice calls. Forget hmm. getting hmm. like consistent hmm. data hmm. on the phone. Hmm. Uh, apart from that, hmm. honestly, I don't hmm. see any challenge. I and I and we mm. all know for sure that this is only going to get better and mm. better. Mm. It's going to get better. Mm. It's going to get more affordable. Mm. Uh, I was recently in a small town. I was in Panipur. Mm. I visit schools a lot. Uh, went to grade six. Mm. Okay, and just you know, I took a show of hands. Mm. How many of you have uh, computers at home? Mm. About thirty percent said mm. computers at home. Mm. Said so how many of you have tablets? Mm. Five percent tablet. Mm. How many of you have smartphones? Mm. Ninety-five percent of sixth graders mm. in Panipur. Mm. Mm small middle class B sort of city mm. had smartphones. Mm. So I completely agree with what Sanjay is saying. Mm. You know, the next revolution in learning mm. is, going, is to going to be going driven to be by personalization, right. uh, affordable smartphones. And mm. of course, we need, we need the internet infrastructure to mm. energize this entire thing. Mm. For Go example, ahead. how people innovate the um, mm. solutions. Mm. There is no internet, mm. but they still need to learn. Mm. So we get more than a few thousand orders every week mm. for getting the content on SD card. Mm. So so I see. And you know, SD card is cheap now. Yes. And 
So people can get 30, 30 GB or 16 GB SD card in 400, 500 rupees, mm. get our content on that mm. and ship it to them in their house. Sometimes no courier is taking it, so we have to send it through normal post. But then that SD card and their uh, smartphone mm. makes it a complete class. Mm. And so democratizing education, mm. this is the movement has come with mm. the help of smartphone, which mm. is an enabler. Mm. And then as the internet improves, mm. there'll be more and more connectivity, but people have found the way mm. to learn through pen drive, through SD cards, which mm. is a huge mm. industry has emerged. Mm. So when we used to ship say 100 a week, mm. now we are shipping thousands a week I see. to their homes. I see. So, so that's a that's way- the thing about being an enterprising nation, that you yeah. always yeah. find a way around the challenge that <laughs> yeah, you have. Right. I always find that remarkable <laughs> about us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as, as, as a society. Uh, you know, uh, there was also, I, I was just, uh, among the things that I came across while researching this is, is a, and this is a, the, basically a study that they've done in America on how, uh, and it struck me was important is because one of the parents called us up with this saying that, how technology is playing a very crucial role for those with learning disabilities, learning challenges as well, and sort of making it more personal and engaging the student more and more beyond what a teacher can do in a classroom of 40, 50, and so on and, and so forth. And she was very keen that we sort of spend some time talking about this also. So which I could sort of just bring you in at, at this point. This is of course another section which has also been left behind traditionally, also now standing up and saying, hey, here's something that we can be part of and gain a lot out of as well. So that's where the point which I was referring in the last conversation is that when you look at the learning, you know, for, you know, for a moment think about technology as an enabler and when you look at learning and if we look at these the disabled people which you uh, like of them and allow them to learn, that's where the whole research aspect come into the mm. picture, that how are you actually lifting up the learning? So mm. for a visually disabled people, how are you actually getting into the researching to find out that how that learning content or learning curriculum is designed in that basis? So for example, if you look at our school system, our learning cur curriculum is very well defined. It's still a manual based. Mm. There's no you know, there's no technology which really happens there. And then when you actually see the similar Mm. strata of people mm. learning the, in the similar way, how would you lift up the whole content uh, mm. intervention there? Mm. So I think the important point which we need to also start thinking now is to really, how do we make it more inclusive? Mm. And how do we do more learning engagement, right. content-based research to right. have inclusive going how through? How do we make it more inclusive? That yeah. will always be something that we keep, I, I guess we, we keep innovating and keep coming up with new ideas, but Jonathan, I have to ask you what was sort of the, the what next? Like, how do we oh, do all of this? We are entering into a very exciting uh, mm. age, mm. the likes of which I think mm. we haven't seen before. Mm. So I think I would say uh, technology integration in schools mm. uh, has so far historically followed a certain path. Mm. Uh, first, you had, of course, no technology. Mm. And then we started having uh, computer labs in schools. Correct. And mm. kids used to troop to the computer lab mm. and used to learn how to do basic or word processing Color and so and on. And so on, right? It was a big deal at that yeah. time, OK? Mm. Now every school has yeah. computer labs, nobody yeah. talks about it anymore. Yeah. The next phase was when you got smart class into mm. the classroom. Mm. So the classroom got energized. Mm. And I think we are on the, on the threshold of this revolution mm. where the backpack mm. is going to be replaced by a tech pack, I would say. Uh, I'll give you uh, three examples of what we do in the Shibnara schools. <coughs> uh, we have online content which is available to the student at home prior to coming into the class. So it's, it's a flipped class. Mm. Uh, flipped class was something which has happened for probably decades. Right. Uh, it's about the professor in a college okay. uh, giving out right. the content which you should be prepared Quite for. But this is itself. online content. Mm. There are videos, it's gamification. <laughs> Children enjoy doing it. They get a lot of concepts clear before they come into class. Mm. And then the discussion the next day is centered around what is not understood right. or what needs to be shared. Right. So there's a second level of understanding something I that see. you worked with earlier. So mm -hmm. that's one sort of an aspect. <laughs> the other aspect is video capture. So mm -hmm. we capture uh, classes which happen inside the class, inside the class in, the, mm -hmm. in the school. Mm -hmm. uh, the teacher can review that, I see. see about her own teaching methodology. Mm -hmm. The student can go back when the student was not attentive in a particular class, mm. or if the student was absent, you got right. access to it, it's stored on cloud, so you can right. look at it. So that's right. another level. I see. The third thing is a clicker, like uh, Amitabh Bachchan on Kaun Banega mm -hmm. So the teacher just has to figure right. what are the concepts that mm. she needs to mm. have been understood as mm. learning objectives at the end of the class. Mm. And then you do a clicker test. The right. children love it. The, you right. get a feedback on how well that's been 
learned and you also know what hasn't been learned. Right. You can go back to it. I, I yeah. just want to take a quick break at this point. There's a lot more that we're discussing as we talk about technology in the classrooms. These are classrooms, not of the future anymore, but classrooms of the present. Classrooms are going to be a reality in the school that perhaps you went to very soon. We're taking a quick break back with more.